followed by 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and then we close it out with another one-mile run. You know, in competition setting, it's so neat that these athletes get a chance to do a hero workout because it's, it's very unique. Um, it's an opportunity to focus on something different when the workout starts to get really hard, when it starts to hurt. And that's the thing, really, we've never had that. It's always been at the CrossFit Games, it's a workout. They're thinking about themselves. They're thinking about what's my strategy. But here, this is the first time they have an opportunity to look past themselves and think about Mike Murphy. And the other thing, look at what they're wearing. They're wearing actual body armor that, you know, that Michael Murphy, when he did this workout, and he called it body armor, this is what they're going to be doing. So what a great thing to see. For the first time in CrossFit Games history, Murph being done in competition. And we start with a one mile run. And with longer events like this, you're not gonna win it here, but you can lose it. <laughs> you absolutely can lose it. Uh, the, all these athletes, they've all done Murph. They've all done it broken up. They've all you know run miles and miles and miles to get ready to come here. But they want, they also know that they want to set the stage. They had that day off, you know, that Thursday break. So all these athletes are rested and ready to go. And I mean, when you have Murph handed to you, it's really hard to go easy out of the gate. You know, you have to have that pace, but these guys want to get up in the front and get moving. The athletes train for the, the unknown and the unknowable. They've done this though. So that takes a little bit of that pressure off for some of the people that are not on the top of the leaderboard that we may have expected. This is the day really the nerves are out. You're gonna see who came here to really compete against the test of the CrossFit Games and who's here just to say, I'm gonna have fun and check it out and see where I'm at. And especially this event because they know how it feels. They know where it's gonna hurt. The only difference is they're being told how to partition this workout. 2010 Games champion Graham Holmberg in the all blue. He is out front first on this initial one mile run. Behind him in the orange sh shorts is Joe Scally. And then directly behind Graham Holmberg, you can't quite see him, but that's Noah Olson, an impressive rookie last year who finished eighth at the CrossFit Games in 2014. What's well, something that I think is going to be real impressive are let's look at your more veteran CrossFit competitors. They've done Murph more times just, oh, just overall than a lot of the younger guys, but the younger guys come in with such, I mean, their explosiveness, their stamina, their power is so incredible. So I'm really anxious to see, you know, you have someone like Graham Homer who's been around a long time. How many times do you think he's done Murph? At least 10 times. So you know he knows how he's, what he's supposed to feel and how he's supposed to feel as he's going through this. Graham Holmberg just passed by Joe Scally, the man out of Canada West. He was a former Cornell hockey player, and I actually got a chance to talk to him a couple weeks before the games, and he said he loves these longer events, and this is certainly a very long event. And when they do this in their own boxes, it's different than how they're going to do it today. Well, one, you have to deal with wherever environment you're coming from. I mean, if you're doing it in Australia, guess what? You're in wintertime right now. You come over here to Carson, California, and it's hot out there. It's extremely humid. You know, we just had that hurricane, all the, the effects from that hurricane that came through. So there's a lot of things that these athletes are having to deal with that they don't normally have in their own box. And don't forget, in their own box, they're not competing against the fittest in the world. So, you know, when you have that pressure, these athletes running this first mile are not going to be going at their fastest mile pace. That just wouldn't be smart. They're not going to kill it here on this very first mile because they'll have nothing left in the tank for the second mile. If you recall last year, any of the runs, the triple threes, we saw it could be very detrimental if you went out too hard too early. So you're not going to be seeing the best mile time that these guys can put up. Joe Scally is the first man to make the turn at the 800 meter mark and he will repeat the course that he just did in reverse order grabbing some water it is really hot out here you competed over the last three days you were in the soccer stadium it's warm. we're up here in the booth and and we're sweating what are the conditions like down there it's well first of all it's extremely humid so your body's trying to cool off you sweat like crazy but that's really difficult to cool yourself off Rory McKernan is another member of our broadcast team. Let's send it down to him on the field. So this vest has been produced by 511 is anything but the one that you would have in your box. There's bells and whistles galore that I'll get into here in a second. I had the opportunity, luckily, to sit with Tom Davin, who's the CEO of the company. And really the history of this vest is what's the most interesting because it was developed by another American hero, Chris Kyle. He talked to Tom, he identified the need 
for a better vest, for a plate holder is what they call it. It takes the rounds from a high-velocity rifle, and these are made for tactical operators. And then he field-tested it himself. So what you'll see is that these are not as easy to get in and out as a typical vest. The athletes are allowed to loosen it, but they may not continue until they've resealed their vest again. Now, what the plate has been replaced with is a plate of steel that's been provided by Rogue Fitness. So the male athletes now holding on to 20 pounds total. Now, they're allowed to take these vests home at the end of the weekend, but if I'm being honest, I think after this event, they might just want to leave it here and forget about it. Thank you, Rojo. Joe Scali continuing to lead. He's at a CrossFit Samiamu in White Rock, British Columbia. It's his first year at the CrossFit Games. And you got to worry about when you see a rookie go out like this, whether or not he's being smart or whether or not he got caught up in the moment. I'm going to say he's getting caught up in the moment. I, I mean, most of these guys, if, if I, I would be looking at about seven and a half minutes, seven minutes, seven and a half minutes or so for the whole mile. I mean, he's on fire right now, and you've got a lot of stuff ahead of you. Even without a vest, an average 800-meter time would be about three, three and a half minutes. He hit that 800-meter mark at 3.01, so he is blazing fast with the vest on. I, I'm going to call rookie mistake, too. <laughs> Joe Scali underneath the Stub Up Center here in Carson, California. He will make a right turn and then head back out onto the soccer field where he will get to work on 100 pull-ups. When looking at the duration of this workout, too, there's no need really to push it and get ahead on this mile. Dude, get ahead the last mile. Right. Save it. Hold back a little bit more, and then that's when you make your move. That's when you push it. Just keep your whereabouts where you are with the group right now for this mile. I think the athletes that are just kind of setting the pace, letting themselves hang out. But you know what? It, it, it could be the fact that it's a hero workout. He's ready to fire. He's fired up. Let's, let me, let's do this. Joe Scally emerging to the cheers of this crowd to be the first man of the pull-up rig. The athletes can choose any lane they want. Jacob Hefner is there as Alex Anderson. Matt Fraser also coming out onto the field. Usually when you do this workout in your own gym, you can break these up any way you want. You can't do that here. you got to go straight through, and that makes a big difference. And I'm so excited that it's set up this way because finally, we finally are getting a true RX of what this workout's supposed to be. 100 pull-ups all the way through. You know, going. You have to do all of the uh, all of the push-ups and then all of the air squats. This is the this is the ugly way to do it, but this is the CrossFit game. So what a what a true testament. What you're going to see is these athletes are going to perform 25 pull-ups, and then they're going to advance to the next pull-up bar, do the next 25, and so on, until they do their 100 pull-ups. So there is a cool little mental break there. You know you get to move, you get to advance, which is good, but you're going to see really the strategy comes down to how many do I do within this 25 at this pull-up bar. And, and all of these athletes are amazing athletes, so they can bust out 50 pull-ups, you know, without stopping at all anyway. Not a smart move here. Um, I think you could even, most of these athletes, if they wanted to break down to less than 10, they would be fine. If they were doing sets of 5 to 10 with a short break, they're going to be moving, and that's a, really smart, that's a really smart strategy. When you have numbers like this, it's all about your rest time and just minimizing the rest time. Take those small breaks, but you have to just keep it short. Yep. Joe Scali was your leader coming out of the tunnel. He had a 5-minute, 53-second mile. Rory McKernan has more on him. You guys were talking about the strategy. Joe Scali clearly has thought this out very well. He's doing sets of five, looking at his watch and waiting just about five seconds for the first set that worked out just fine. He looks to have slowed just a little bit, but he's thought it out. We'll see how it plays out through the pull-ups. Thanks, Ro. Joe Scali, as we approach the eight-minute mark, Jacob Hepner is joining with Alex Anderson. Dan Tominski's on the right side of your screen. I'm looking to see some big things from Jacob Hefner in this particular workout. This sits in his wheelhouse. You put any sort of a long grinder one, but a basically a body weight movement type of a workout, and he's going to be unbelievable. Plus, he just has that, he's got that little click in the brain where he's smiling and laughing this whole time. That's a dangerous athlete to have next to him. Hefner came in in 13th place overall. He has 98 points, and leading up to the games, he actually knew that he was going to have to do Murph, and he did a different version of it, put on a weight vest, and did 50 straight chest bar pull-ups during that workout. So that guy has some pulling power. Many athletes have advanced to that second of four bars. They do 25 pull-ups on each one of those bars, and they will also partition their push-ups and their air squats. Jacob Hefner 
Trying to get back to work on his now third set. Fourth set now of 25. Is Jacob Hebner is very much in the lead. He's taken over from Joe Scally, who is the leader on the run. Those are big sets of pull-ups that he's putting together, which is great. But again, even the pull-up segment, 100 sounds a lot for a lot of people, but for these athletes, it's not that large of a number. So the time frame that these guys are going to be here is only going to be about three minutes or so, or we're really going to start seeing a separation is going to be on the push-ups. That's where it gets deadly. Well, and the work, com it compounds. The, the effects of it compound because they're wearing that weight vest also if you've ever a lot of people do this without the weight vest a lot of people that are not this level <laughs> but um if you've never done it it really does it really smokes your lungs really takes a lot out of you Love Jacob Hebner is the first man to the push-ups. He will partition these in sets of 50 and each 50 he will move farther up the field now you see that Jacob just got up off the ground. I, I don't think that was a good move. He should have stayed lower so he doesn't have to actually go down into another push-up. Stay down, stay relaxed. Don't stand up and do extra work when you don't need to. It's hot down there on the ground, but I agree, especially with that weight vest on, it's just a lot more energy that you need to expend. This is Hebner's second year at the CrossFit Games. He was 18th in 2014. He's out of Iron Major CrossFit in Fourth Leavenworth, Kansas. Yunkowski wearing the white leader's jersey now on the push-ups this young man was impressive last year as a rookie sort of tailed off as the games went on he has a lead here and this is a much different cozy than we saw last year absolutely last year in the in the fitness in the long endurance event with the triple threes he was 42nd so you wouldn't have expected him to do very well in this but i actually saw him earlier training at crossfit la when, when he was down here getting used to it and he he did with the weight vest hand release push-ups and hit 37 minutes so extremely strong time i think this is going to be an excellent workout for him as well second year at the games you always have that experience that confidence under your belt you know the things that you need to work on you are exposed your weaknesses and just the smart athletes are going to work on that and come in a lot better prepared 11 minutes into event number three it's murph it started with a one mile run 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and then 300 squats, followed by another mile. And Jonkowski, the 20-year-old out of Ori, Finland, the man who came in with the overall lead, working away on his set of 100 push-ups. Every 50, the athletes will move farther up the field. Jacob Hefner in the blue shorts was your leader off the pull-up bar. Next to him in the orange shirt is Alex Anderson. And then on the right of your screen is Dan Tominski. Yo, Kosi starting to struggle a little bit, but resting on the ground, not standing up. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. If you saw Jacob actually stayed on the ground with the rest of the field, which is a smart move. There's no, really no sense to do burpees in the middle of Murph. There's no need to add insult to injury. Hebner bringing the water bottle with him. He is on his second set of 50. He is your leader. Jonkowski has also finished up. He and Hebner fighting for the top spot in Murph. All 40 men on the field at the same time. Jankowski had an impressive performance in the regionals. He's the only man to win four events at a regional this year. Of course, he went on to win that. And he's coached by 2009 CrossFit Games champion Miko Salo. And now Noah Olson in the blue shorts and black top. On the right of your screen is on his second set of 50. Dan Tominski, who just went out of your view, he's, his, he's on his second 50 as well. Noah Olsen, there was a lot of buzz about him, a lot of hype, and so he really does need a really good showing today to get himself back up there if he wants a chance at the podium. Dan Tominski is a man with military experience. It's his fourth appearance at the CrossFit Games. He failed to qualify last year, but his best finish 2012 when he was 14. Cole Sager in the middle of your screen. He's out of the Northwest, played football at the University of Washington, walked on there. Now with Cole being a larger athlete, that number of, of reps he's trying to get together is going to be a lot smaller, so you see him doing sets of two, but he has to be smart. Keep that rest short. The last thing on push-ups you want is you want those triceps to just burn out, because once they go, you have no choice but to just sit there. And that is the biggest problem with any sort of bodyweight gymnastics movement, is once they go, if yeah, they go, gone. they're gone. But for the larger athletes, they need to be smart about it. it. Cole needs to be okay with the fact that he's only doing two, which he seems to be all right. You know, sit back, rest, do your thing. Uh, then when you're able to get to him, you know, the, the air squats or somewhere, you're going to be more powerful. That's where you're going to make it your distance. Very, very short. 
And these athletes have to make sure that their body is staying nice and flat. They can't have their hips rise before the rest of their body, or that's a no rep. So it's a little different with that, that body armor. And you see Noah Olsen has to slow down a little bit and make sure that he makes each and every rep count. It's really easy to pop your hips up off the ground before. And Olsen getting a no rep there. That vest he's wearing has to make contact with the ground, and then he has to reach full extension with his arms at the top of the push-up. And the awkward part is with that body armor, it's different than the weight vest a lot of us have at our gym. So it is a little different. The thickness, it might hit the ground a little bit sooner than the thigh. It is something that they have to adapt to. I still think that all these athletes, instead of trying to lower themselves down, they should be bouncing and rebounding off their chest. You, you take, put that, put that to the ground, rebound, and at least try to give your arms a little help. Sure, think about a deadlift. A heavier deadlift, you stay tight, keep your body as tight as possible, but you kind of bounce off the ground. You that. Dan Tominski is the second man to his third set of 50 push-ups. Jonkowski was there first, and now Noah Olsen. Those three men at the top of your screen. Olsen is in the blue shorts. Tominski is on the inside, and then at the top in the white jersey is Jonkowski, and he's your overall leader coming into this event. Your top three in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And for Koski, if he can stay towards the front here, there are a lot of tests that remain here in the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games, but getting up top early and racking up those points, you get 100 for a victory, 94 for second place, and then so on and so forth as you move down. That's definitely going to help him. And look at the technique that Yon is doing. Every time he takes his reps, whatever that number is, and he looks like he's broke down to two, he actually doesn't come all the way up. He's, he just kind of pulls himself back, lets his arms completely relax, but he's not moving so far away from the movement. Goes right to there. His hands are still on the ground. It's like if you move away from the bar, it takes too long to get back to the bar if you have to actually do the movement. He has the weight vest on, so for anybody that's used to sitting up and sitting back, it's a lot more weight he has, so this is the most relaxed position without keeping that pressure on his shoulders. And I did see him train earlier. One of the techniques uh, that, that his coaches had him do was if you do your push-up and you lay flat on the ground just to you know give his back and arm the complete rest. Jokoski continues to lead here. Roy McKernan's on the field with more. Roy? Guys, Yana Koski, despite being in the lead, has been fighting against no reps. The rule, actually, where he's having trouble is on the bottom, where he has to compress his body against the, uh, the armor on the ground. Oftentimes, like you just saw, the body armor is touching, but his body is not. So he's doing way more than the, than the required 200 push-ups. Thanks, Ro Yonkowski, taking a break. Next to him in the all-black and off is Austin Maliolo. The name of this workout is Murph, and in CrossFit, if you're new to the community, we have named workouts after fallen heroes who have given their lives in the line of service. People might be familiar with Mike Murphy, the man through Hollywood, but they, they may not know the full story. Yeah, the movie came out, Lone Survivor, that basically talked about the Operation Wet Red Wing and what, you know, what Michael Red Murphy did. Red, Wing, Red Wings. And what Michael Murphy did um, basically gave his life for his crew so that they could be rescued. That's what he was trying to do. But the fact that the fact that we all get to experience a workout that he did on a regular basis, this was something that he loved to do when he was, you know, out, out, out when they were on, on their bases. This is the workout that he did. We all get to experience that now. And, I mean, just what an honor it is for these athletes to be able to put it to the test for all of us to see. But all the people in the stands and all the CrossFit people out there, all the fans out there, we know exactly what they're feeling. That's impressive. When it first appeared on the CrossFit Games, at the CrossFit main site, it was called Body Armor, and then named after Michael Murphy. Noah Olson and Jonkowski were the two men to their final set of 50 push-ups and no Olsen small sets but very quick Olsen on the left Koski on the right Olsen needs to score some points here he had a disappointing day on Wednesday did very well in pure paddle but then had a disaster in sandbag 2015 he had his wheelbarrow loaded up fully and then dumped it halfway across the floor and basically had to redo all the work he just did that cost him precious time and put him back in the stands he comes in in 14th place overall he's moving so quick through those push-ups that's impressive the volume that this guy works at is just incredible i mean he he's one of those athletes that sees what other CrossFit Games athletes are doing, and he makes sure he matches, if not beats, their volume. Ha young kid, so he recovers fast, and so a workout like this, an event like this, is definitely something right up his wheelhouse. Jorgen Gudmundsen, 
has moved himself into third place out of the Meridian Regional. We approach 20 minutes in Murph, the first time it has ever been done at the CrossFit Games. So on Wednesday, we got a little test, a little taste of the test of this 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. And the cool part is that this event is the long event of the test. You know, in Greg Glassman's definition of what is fitness, it, he says, go long every once in a while. So we're not going to see all of the events here at the Games be this long, long event. But, you know, in, in years past, people started just doing these short little Metcons, and they avoided doing these long workouts, these long events. So I love having them come back because it's always a reminder for people, you can't just do the short little you know, lift real, real heavy and do your short little Metcons. You have to do this once in a while because the stimulus there is just so great. So I love testing these types of events. Well, then the other aspect of that, we went all in the water. Let's test that. Then we went to something that you don't normally do in your gym. I mean, how many times do people move sandbags and lift them upstairs? That's a straight grunt work. And then we come back in with not only a here workout, but a classic CrossFit workout that you can, anyone can do this workout anywhere. So if you're out traveling around, you're at the hotel, you can always do Murph. And that's where the CrossFit Games is such a true test of fitness finding the fittest because it is all those different aspects and that's where Wednesday is crazy where you see people that you don't normally would expect that are so good at CrossFit. Noah Olson is the first man to his 300 air squats and perform 75 at each station. When he's done with 300, it's back out for that final one mile run. So with Noah Olson, what's really going to go in his favor with this is not only the fact that he's a great athlete, not only the fact that he has a great engine, he's a little bit shorter than some of the other athletes. And look where his feet are. He's a little wider, so that's shortening up that range of motion. Super smart for this move. Noah Olson is the man towards the top of your screen. Towards the bottom is Bjorgen Gubinson, who moved himself into second place. And now Alex Anderson is moving up to join those three men on his 300 air squats. And that's impressive, Alex Anderson. So we just talked about how Noah Olson's a little bit shorter, Alex Anderson's a little bit taller. Very powerful, extremely strong. And again, we knew the push-ups were gonna be basically the separator for the for the group which has been. And there he is, right up at the front. It's still gonna come down to what pacing works best for these athletes, knowing what their capabilities are, how many squats they can do in a row before they need to take a little breather. Noah Olsen on the right of your screen receiving a no rep from his judge. He didn't hit full depth. The crease of your hip has to be below your knee for that rep to count. And he gets another one on the left is Alex Anderson, the CrossFit Games rookie who finished third in the central. Meanwhile, the overall leader, Young Koski, has joined the leaders on his first set of 75. And next to him in the all black is Austin Maliolo. It's really easy with a weight vest on for your chest to fall forward a little bit more than it normally does when you're just doing standard air squats, and that can sometimes raise your hips up a little higher. You think you're at depth, but you're just not. Noah Olson in first place. He got to the 300 air squats almost 20 and a half minutes into this event. Jorgen Gubinson followed him and then Jom Koski, another European. So we have two Europeans. You can see the effect that this event and this heat and that vest has on these athletes. <laughs> That's one big ugly math problem you just put together right there. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things to deal with. I think what Noah really needs to do is not to try to gain this so much. You know, don't try to strategize. Just do what you do and do some hard work. He's such a great athlete. He just needs to get in there. He's not. He won't get no rep if he does what he needs to do, which is all the way down, all the way up. But I think he's trying to game it just a touch. Noah Olson at the top of your screen, taking some time just to pour some water down his back to cool himself off a little bit. He's the first man, along with Jorvan Gubinson, at the bottom of your screen on those second set of 75. And Gubinson at the bottom of your screen looking at Noah Olson, and Noah Olson got another no rep, and he's getting a little frustrated. You can see him talking to his judge a little bit. Now here comes Joe Koski, the overall leader through two events, wearing that white leader's jersey. The nice part about doing an event with everyone going at the same time is you know exactly where you're going to stand on the leaderboard at the end of this event. Looking around, if he can be first, he knows there's nobody chasing, there's not another heat, it's right here. Everybody out, you know exactly where you are. Noel Olson so far has had a very good pace. 
Behind him, over his right shoulder, is Dan Taminski. And next to Taminski is Jacob Hefner, who did very well on the pull-ups. Jorgen Gubinson, second in the Meridian region. He did gymnastics for nine years and soccer for 14. His brother actually signed him up for the Open in 2012. And here he is at the CrossFit Games. Man, he's moving so well also. It's not super fast, but he's making every rep count, and he just looks comfortable. Very and relaxed. that's what you need. You need to have this in these long events. Push just enough to where you're not hitting that red line, but staying comfortable, staying consistent, staying nice and calm. Bjorn Gubinson has managed to pass up another man from the Meridian Regional. That's Jun Koski, the 20-year-old from Corey, Finland. Man who was coached by 2009 CrossFit Games champion, Miko Salo. Gubinson still in second place towards the top middle part of your screen. The athletes working their way from left to right on your screen. And after 300 air squats, it's back out through the tunnel on a final one mile run. Matt Fraser, the man who finished second last year in the CrossFit Games, he's in the orange on the right side of your screen. He has the beard. One of the favorites to win the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. And now Bjorgen Gubinson has taken the lead from Noah Olsen, and he is on his third of four sets of 75 air squats. Again, real smart with that water poured on his body. Let that slight breeze. You can see the flags out there barely moving. So you need to do whatever you can do to try to stay as cool. That water on the shirt's going to be nice, especially when you have that body armor blocking everything. A couple different options you can do here. You know, I've seen people, when they have high volume squats like this, they'll go really fast for 10 and then take a break really fast. His speed and his pacing, his tempo, very, very proficient. Noah Olsen has now joined Jorgen Gubinson on his third of four sets of 75. Jon Koski is there as well. So the three men who separated themselves in the push-ups, Jon Koski, Noah Olsen, and Jorgen Gubinson continue to lead Murph, this final 300 air squats before that last one mile run. One other thing we need to know while we're watching all these athletes doing all these air squats. The last time we saw an event like this was the beach workout way back when, 2010. Andy Thorsauter had her, I'm sorry, 2012. Andy Thorsauter was putting her hands on her legs for the air squats. So there was always kind of a shuffle in the CrossFit community of if that was okay or not. They were told that for this event, you are not allowed to touch your legs. So you're seeing some of the athletes are holding on to their vest, hands down to the side. But, man, this is we're getting the absolute true testament of what this workout is supposed to look like. That's Matt Fraser, who is almost done with his second set of 75 air squats. Fraser coming in in third place overall. He had a great performance on Wednesday night in Sandbag 2015 for the Champlain Valley CrossFit. And Fraser is the man who, as a rookie, pushed four-time fittest man on earth Rich Froning through the final event at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games to finish second, thus the high expectations coming into this year. No rep for Matt Fraser, but continues to move. Still looks so strong, and we know his legs are so powerful with all of his Olympic lifting background. So he has that nice little bounce out of the bottom, which is going to help out. Noah also now has that towel on his neck, trying to cool himself off again. It is very warm down there and very humid, unusually humid. But if anybody can handle it, it would be Noah Olson. He's out of Miami Peak 360, so he's used to this. Very much used to this, but it Jorman Gubinson, who continues to lead here on his final set of 75 air squats to complete 300 total. Let's send it down to Rory McKernan. Guys, I'm down here on the field watching these athletes go. Bjorkman did not get to the pull-ups first. He didn't finish those first. He made a slow comeback from behind Noah Olsen, took the lead, and now he looks unstoppable. When they got to the 225 reps, he was, he was just up and down like a piston. He's taking very few reps, whereas Noah Olsen is just doing what he can. He'll go fast, stop, shake his legs out, go slow. But Goodmanson has taken only two breaks so far in his final set. Thanks, Roy Jokowski. Another European has joined Jorvik Gubinson on his final set of 75 air squats. 
Koski in second, Gubinson in first. Look at that, he looks so relaxed. And what I like is he was actually looking back as he's doing each rep to see where everyone is. Not, not getting so caught up in how many reps I have to do left. He's just seeing where everyone is, kind of taking it all in. Just keep on moving. Such a long event. Like Murray said, not first to any of the movements, but that's not what it's about. In a long event, it's what do you have left at the end. Matt Fraser on his final set of 75 as well. Gubinson comes in in sixth place overall. Plenty of tests remaining. This is just day two. But 100 points for winning this event are going to go a long way. And Fraser's peeking to his left, looking around. It looks like he's ready to make a move as well. Alex Anderson also joining the men on their final set of 75 air squats. Anderson on the right in the orange shirt. Jacob Hefner's getting set to move up as well. He's right next to Alex Anderson. So those guys in that final lane, that final set that they have to do with these air squats, it's not a matter of, I just need to get through this. They are trying to mentally put themselves into, I need to sprint a mile after this, because now they do need to run fast, because this is where the race actually is going to be happening. You need to get ready to go, and then put the pedal to the metal. One more for Bjorgen Gubinson, and he will take off through the tunnel, and he is the first man off on that final one-mile run just past the 30-minute mark. 20 pounds are in that vest. And that probably feels like 100 right now to Bjorgen Gubinson. The compounding effects of all those squats, the first mile run, the lactic acid that builds up in there over that time over this past half hour has just been a lot. So right now, when you initially get started, you're like, ooh, my legs are like concrete. It'll actually feel a little better after the first 400 meters. And you can see, look at his stride. He's pretty heavy with his feet. You know, a lot of a lot of heel striking, but that'll kind of loosen up once he gets moving. Austin Maliolo, the second man of the run, and Matt Fraser has now moved in the third. Fraser in the orange shirt. He's grabbing some water and heading back underneath the stub up center. Gubinson with about a 40-second lead, though, on Austin Maliolo, who's making his way now underneath the stub up center. And Matt Fraser finishing up his air squats just three seconds behind Maliolo. Gubinson had the fastest time through all of those body weight movements and now up that incline where he'll make a left turn and head out on flatter ground. That is not enjoyable. I mean, one, you just got your start to run. Two, you just had all those air squats, but that hill's not going to be enjoyable. Now Noah Olsen is through his 300 air squats, and he will try to catch the three men who got out ahead of him. Olsen trying to move up the leaderboard, coming in in 14th place overall. Jungkowski is also out on his run. I said after the first about 400 meters, you start to feel a little better, but this is a competition setting. So while you might settle into what the run is, it still hurts. And now you're going to have the, the pressure of those guys behind you, hearing them come up on your back. He's going to have to push for this. Koski's on your left, Maliolo in the black, and Matt Fraser in the orange on your right. And now Jung Koski emerging from the tunnel and behind him is noah olsen and olsen has a very good pace here look at the, just the way he looks is so different than all the other athletes his legs look okay that gait that stride really looks like noah's normal run and he must have had at least 20 no reps through all those air squats so the fact that he's able to do that much more work and still have that much of a kick right now that's pretty impressive so he's gonna be deadly on this mile Jorgen Gubinson, though, still a sizable lead over the men behind him. Gubinson, who just left your screen, and back to the men chasing him. Austin Maliolo was second to this third or this final one mile run. Behind him, Matt Fraser. I love the fact that Austin is up toward the front. That's exactly what we were talking about earlier. Your veteran CrossFitters. I mean, a very, you know, a very well-known CrossFit coach. He programs for, you know, Reebok CrossFit 1 and all of his members there. And you know that they do this on a regular basis. So it's cool to see him out in the front knowing the pace and knowing what he needs to do. Gubinson on the left. He's your leader. Austin Maliello taking a look behind him. He'll see Matt Fraser chasing him for second. Again, to win the CrossFit Games, it's about consistency. Noah Olsen creeping up as well. Matt Fraser doesn't need to win this event, but he's had two solid results so far. He finished 12th in pure paddle, then second Wednesday night. Finishes the top five here. 
Look out. But the one thing for Fraser is that he's not known for his long capacity. That is not his wheelhouse. So if we're going to see it, you know, creep up a little bit, these other guys that, that is in their wheelhouse, he's going to be struggling. He's going to have to make a push to keep himself up there. Austin Maliolo in the middle of your screen. Behind him is Matt Fraser. So Maliolo putting a little bit of different dif distance between himself and Fraser. Noah Olsen's at the very tip top of your screen trying to track down those other two men. Jordan Gubinson continues to lead. Sixth place overall after two events. It's surprising to see him in the top ten. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't I wasn't really expecting this, but I really think that he was pushing a little hard on the air squats. He's still, his run is not very solid. I mean, he looks very lumberish with his legs. Doesn't look very comfortable. Well, for how relaxed he looked on the air squats and he was going at that pace, I really thought that, yeah, he would come out and even look a little more uh, like Noah Olsen. No, yeah. Looked a little more reckless on the squats, but came out with his run. So it doesn't have to be pretty, though, Bill. No. <laughs> Uh, Jason Clifford doesn't make it look pretty, but that guy, he's uh, incredibly fast. See, to me, that looks perfect. That looks like me fresh, so I don't, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with that. Gubinson working his way back. He just passed Fraser and Moliolo and Noah Olson. Gubinson has never won an event at the CrossFit Games. He's only been here one year. That was last year when he finished 26th overall. Psychologically, when you hit that 800 meter and you start to pass other guys, boy, that feels good. So right now for him, he knows he's over halfway. He just has to keep pushing, get get himself back there. So he'll have what it takes, I believe. But you know, yeah, a surprise for him. But getting that first place win, it's only going to help bump him up the leaderboard coming into today in sixth place. Maliello making the turn for home, as is Matt Fraser. Noah Olson in the blue shorts at the upper left part of your screen just left your picture. He'll make the turn as well. Now Fraser turning it on a little bit. Matt Fraser said last year before the games he didn't run at all zero no <laughs> running he's worked on that and remember in the regionals he won event three that was that grueling long event Fraser has worked on that and now he's threatening to take over second place from Austin Maliolo it looked like he was trying to compose himself for that first 800 knowing where the kick was going to need to come in really no sense of wasting the energy and look at that his run looks a lot better look he's controlling his vest that's impressive he but lost a lot of weight too so he is able to carry his body a little differently than he did last year as well the crowd erupting as Matt Fraser made the pass and now sits in second place behind Bjorkman Gubinson who is comfortably out in first Noah Olson still in fourth, and Olson needs a solid result here. He came in in 14th place overall after the first two events on Wednesday. Gubinson has to be happy with that. He looked behind him and didn't see a single athlete. Final leg, Cole Sager, the man with no shirt and that vest on who just left your screen, also out on his run. Lucas Hoberg in the orange just left the screen. He's out on his final one mile run. And now Bjorkman Gubinson down the hill. And this has to be the most enjoyable part of the run for Bjorkman Gubinson on that decline. 100%. One, you're, you don't, you can slow down just a touch because you know those guys are way back there. Two, you have a little downhill. And three, you know that it's almost over. Well, and plus Literally fact, light at the end of the tunnel. It is light at the end of the tunnel. It's a home stretch and you know the crowd is waiting for you back at the stadium. It was a lonely run there for him and he's going to come back to the warm welcome of the crowd. Scott Panching in the orange who is running up the hill as Gubinson was running down starting his run. Panchik, another man who came in with high expectations. And here comes Bjorkman Gubinson. Looking to lock up 100 points with an event win in Murph. The first time it's ever been done at the CrossFit Games. Bjorkman Gubinson hearing it from the crowd as they anticipate his emergence from the tunnel at the StubHub Center. Rising to their feet to salute the man who's going to win this event, Bjorkman Gudmundsen. From Iceland. Hearing it from this crowd at the Subhub Center, and Gudmundsen will take event number three, Murph, his final mile time just around eight minutes. So impressive, so impressive. So, I mean, you say slow and consistent wins the race. Uh, he was, I don't want to say he was slow, because obviously he won the race. 
but it was so smooth Pace, and controlled. Tempo. He just had it all the way through those early parts that he could just have it. It didn't have to look like the best, most the easiest run from there at the end, but he had enough in the tank. This looks so relaxed, impressive. So that was that was that was a great run. Great Rubinson run. takes a bow as Matt Fraser now the second man out of the tunnel. Matt Fraser will finish second for the second straight event. Noah Olsen in third as he had passed Austin Maliolo. Olsen in the blue shorts behind Fraser. Great result for Noah Olsen. He absolutely needed that after his disappointing finish in Sandbag 2015. Matt Fraser is in. He will finish second. And Noah Olsen saluting the crowd. He will lock up third place, and Olsen will earn 88 points for that result. Fraser will get 94. This is exactly what Noah Olsen needed, and now he has the momentum. Now his games have begun. Austin Maliolo, he will finish in fourth. Maliolo, his fifth appearance of the CrossFit Games, his best result was when he finished sixth in 2010, and he will lock up a fourth place finish. Olsen earning, sorry, Maliolo earning 84 points for that result. And coming in today in 38th place, that absolutely, again, for him, will bump him up the leaderboard. His game starts today. For a lot of these typical CrossFit athletes that we, are, we hear all the time or familiar names, this is where it begins, and now you're going to see that fire lit. Young Koski getting set to exit onto the soccer field on the final leg of his 100, 100 his one-mile run. It seems like it's 100 when I look at it. One-mile run across the soccer stadium here. What a great first three events for him. I mean, super, that, that's the way you want to start off the CrossFit game. Great position for such a young athlete. Miko Salo was the last European man to win the CrossFit Games. That's in 2009. He's Koski's coach, and you could be looking at the next European superstar in the men's division. Yon Koski, who led for much of this event, but fell behind on the squats. Closing out, Koski will finish in fifth. That will add 80 points to his score. He came in with the overall lead. Jacob Hepner will finish up. Hepner, a sixth place finish. That will be good for 76 points. Alex Anderson getting passed by Adrian Conway. Conway has been to the games before as a member of a team. He was on U CrossFit Hacks Pack, the team that won back-to-back -back affiliate cups in 2012 and 2013. His first year as an individual. Little mistake there for Anderson walking. Thought he, he didn't know anybody was behind him there. So Gotta every beware. place matters. You're going to see if Anderson's going to make a, a sprint here. Adrian Conway and Alex Anderson, it's a foot race. Anderson's starting to pull away two former football players, but here comes Adrian Conway, and Conway is going to win that foot race. Can you imagine how bad that would feel on your legs having to sprint that fast after all that work? Oh, my word. Yeah, that, that, that. It's going to be a little hamstring, a little hamstring issues on that They're one. They're going to be feeling that. Adrian Conway's used to running away from people. He played running back at Weber State in high school. He ran for 337 yards and five touchdowns in one game. But that right there, that shows how important, that shows how important each of these places are. You got to get the points you can, when you can, so you can't just let someone just sneak by like that. That's going to be a place on Sunday when people look back and they say, ah, that was the moment. That was, that was the time where I got past, and that was a huge mistake because that's precious points. Points are points. Back on the course, meanwhile, Lucas Hobart, Dan Kaminsky. We've also had Ben Garrard out of Australia finish. He locks up a ninth place finish and then Ben Smith as well he was 10th in this event Lucas Hogberg coming out of the tunnel behind him Dan Tominski
Hogberg coming in in fourth place overall. Great result for him. And Lucas Hogberg making sure that no one catches him gets across the finish line. Hogberg, his second year at the CrossFit Games, he was 23rd in 2014. Dan Tominski finishing up just inside 44 minutes. These guys cannot wait to get that vest off of them. Hepner's already shed it. That's Scott Panchik. Panchik is digging himself a hole after day one. Panchik sat in 31st place. He finished 20th in event one, 33rd in event two. And that means he's going to have to do it not just well, but really, really well on the rest of the world. He's going to have to start winning some events. Yeah. Very surprising seeing as last year there was so much talk about, you know, the pressure he was putting on Rich and, and seeing him at the Central East Regional last year, just seconds behind, at one second, so many events where he was one second behind Rich. It doesn't seem like the Panchik that we're that we're used to seeing. Scott Panchik on the right, getting ready to come out of the tunnel. Cole Sager is on the left. No need for him to hurry. There's nobody pushing him for the next position. Cole Sager will finish up. He's also a sophomore at the CrossFit Games. Finished 17th in his rookie campaign last year. Here comes Scott Panchik. And with that point system, the way it's set up, I mean, it pays to be a winner. You get more points for being in the higher places. You just can't allow yourself to be on the bottom half of the field. Uh, that's just going to be just, just detrimental to, to his chances. Sager finished 13th. He'll earn 54 points. Panchik will get across the finish line, and that'll be 52 for a 14th place finish. So a decent result for Scott Panchik. It's not going to catapult him up the leaderboard but it will help. Here comes Dan Bailey, the man who won the California Regional. Meanwhile, Tyson Takasaki's on the field as Bailey makes the final turn back out onto the grass. Tyson Takasaki's gonna finish in 15th. That'll be good for 50 points. John Para. He's a full time officer with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. Better watch out behind him because he has a lead on Bailey, but Dan Bailey's a sprinter. But John Para will not be caught, though. Good result for John Para. And he needed that as well. He was kind of sitting towards the bottom of the pack going into this event. That was a good one, a good grinder for him. So real impressive, especially being one of the larger athletes. That, that's a great positioning. Dan Bailey is done. Bailey, a crowd favorite here. Nathan Bramblett, the CrossFit Games rookie. Looking at body types, Bill, you know, and saying how he's a, one of the bigger athletes. The advantage, though, was that this is a workout most of them have done. Yep. Bramblett better watch out, because Chad McKay, the big man out of Australia, who came in with the same amount of points as Yon Koski, is about ready to pass him, and Bramblett realizes it, and Chad McKay gets across before Nate Bramblett. Chad McKay is one of the bigger guys in this field. He's 225 pounds. This event already didn't favor him. Now you make him 245, an impressive result for Chad McKay. A nice finish. That's a powerful sprint. But again, Nathan Bramblett being a rookie, not necessarily aware of his surroundings, just couldn't couldn't get it going fast enough. But coming into today, second place, he really did need those points. So see, he will drop down the leaderboard. He knew every every place that mattered for him. Big crowd on hand here at the soccer stadium, the Stub Up Center in Carson, California, to watch the fittest men on earth do Murr for the first time at the CrossFit Games. Neil Maddox, the oldest competitor in the men's field, still out on that final one-mile run. Alex Vino has finished up. Here comes Lucas Parker, who's just making the turn on the final 800-meter leg. Parker easily one of the most recognizable athletes of the game because of that beard. Chad Cole is across the finish line. Rob Forte. 
And I would have expected a lot more from Rob Forte on this one. I mean, he won the triple threes last year, looked so strong as an, in, as an endurance athlete, which is what this is, and I just would have thought he would have been up towards the front. Yeah, triple threes, 3,000 meter row, followed by 300 double unders and a three mile run, and Rob Forte crushed that last year. Graham Holberg, who was out front in that first one mile run, as was this man, Joe Scally, the game's rookie out of the Canada West region. Falling back and taking a look over his shoulder. Stephen Fawcett is the man trying to chase down Scally. But Scally's going to be able to hold him off. Graham Holmberg is trying to chase down Con Porter as Fawcett gets himself across the finish line. Porter on the left, Holmberg on the right. Holmberg has passed Porter. Porter, the man who won the... The opening event, finished second of the opening event to Jonkowski. The two of them are now done as the 2010 Games champion, the only former champion in the men's field here. Holberg came into today, into this event, sitting in eighth place. So, probably going to drop him a little bit down the leaderboard, but he still always knows a very intelligent athlete, veteran, knows about getting those points. Still had it in him to make that push at the end. Spencer Handel, another big athlete, 215, now 235 with that West, that vest on him. He's across the finish line. That's Nick Urankar right behind him. Urankar finishing up as well. Well, and that's where we can we can kind of compare it to the triple threes. That was our long event last year, but they weren't wearing a vest. They weren't wearing body armor, so that really does make a difference when you're seeing some of these guys that you wouldn't normally expect to do so well or do so poorly. Let's send it down to Roy McKernan, who's been on the field for this entire event. Ro? Guys, I'm down here looking at one very lonely squatter left alone completing his work. It looks like to be Jordan Cook. Elijah Muhammad was the last one out the door. He left with about 10 minutes left. Here's how it works if athletes don't finish the event. There's three checkpoints. One is finishing the squats. The second is the halfway turnaround at the run. And the third is finishing the tunnel portion of the run. So athletes who do not finish the actual workout will not be forced to do the last run, but they'll be ranked according to where they finish there. Thanks, Ro. Jordan Cook, the only man not on the run. That's Elijah Muhammad, who's following Phil Hesketh. Neil Maddox finishing up. Jordan Cook is finally done with his 300 air squats and walking his way towards the tunnel. Roy Gamboa is also on the field. He'll finish behind Neil Maddox. Gambo in his second year at the CrossFit Games. He debuted in 2013. He finished 22nd. Finished first in the South Regional. Top five unofficially for Murph. Jordan Goodmanson, his first career event win at the CrossFit Games, and he's followed by a pair of Americans, Matthew Fraser and Noah Olson, rounding out the top three. Then another American, Austin Moliolo, and then the Finnish sensation, Jan Koski, the youngster who came in with the overall lead in fifth. Right now, 55-minute time cap. Lucas Parker, crowd favorite. Hearing it from the fans at the soccer stadium at the Stub Up Center. Making his final journey down the field to the finish line. He's an athlete that always has a game plan. I guarantee you he came in with a game plan for Murph. I'm sure he's done this many times, and... Really, you don't ever see him deviate from the plan, which I think sometimes for him is actually it's a mistake because he doesn't adapt as much on the fly as to his other athletes and other competitors and what they're doing. Well, he, he's one of those athletes that loves the training portion of competition rather than the actual competition. So when he comes out with the game plan, it doesn't really matter what all is happening. He's doing his thing. Wherever that ends up putting him, it puts him there. We'll put him at 34th here, and he'll earn 12 points. Phil Hesketh. Behind him, easy Elijah Muhammad. They have two minutes to finish this thing up. And Elijah Muhammad, known for just lifting heavy, heavy weights all the time. Big one rep maxes. Man, did he get a shot this CrossFit game so far doing the doing that long row and then this long event. But Phil Hesketh is the only man from Africa, Latin America, or Asia competing at the games this year. He played semi-pro rugby. 
So he's a lot of fans supporting him. Bounce around a little bit uh, from different regionals, and then when we combined the region this year, he was placed into the Africa region, competed in the Meridian regional, and finished fifth there to earn his way to the CrossFit Games. We haven't mentioned it yet, but this is the first time we're seeing those regions come together and so we really are every year we've tested the fittest and no doubt the fittest has been crowned champ but this year is the first we're seeing those regions come together and there's a lot of names here that are that we've seen in the past that that are not are new names but there's a lot of people here that are not here that we were, right. were used to seeing the competition just every year is just incrementally better incrementally better Muhammad in front of Hesketh as they make their way underneath the stub up center, but there's only 40 seconds to go. Meanwhile, Aaron Hanna has emerged from the tunnel. He's trying to get in inside that 55 minute time cap. Hanna at about halfway point so he can safely get himself in. Chad Melton also on the field as well. He is in the blue shirt right behind Hannah. He's going to have to hurry up to get himself across the finish line. I guarantee you he wants to finish this event. It looks like he wants to go faster. He just can't. Melton so will not get it. So close. And for the first time in games history, Murph is done. And the winner... Jordan Gubinson as Phil Hesketh undoes his vest. Easy Muhammad taking some water. Ben Smith there behind him. Melton could not quite get himself across the finish line, signing his scorecard. Top 10 unofficial results. Again, the winner, Bjorkman Gubinson, followed by Matt Fraser and Noah Olson, who needed that result. Austin Maliolo. And the overall leader coming into this event, Jonkowski, rounding out the top five. And when you see the top athletes in the world looking like that, you know this was a grueling event. Great finish here between Chad McKay, who chased down Nathan Ramblin. Chad McKay, that's impressive for a man who weighs 225 without that vest. And then in third place, no Olsen really kind of struggled in the beginning, but he's just just his endurance and his tenacity and when he's competing always puts him up into those great places and great finishes. Second place, Matt, Matt Fraser. Matt Fraser, this guy, talk about a guy who doesn't have an engine. Wow, he's, he's proving everybody wrong. Whatever, whatever weaknesses he's had, they aren't weaknesses anymore. So guess what? Across the game, you better look out because this guy is hunting. And finally, the man who won it, Jorvik Gubinson, who picked the perfect pace. Uh, yeah, the perfect pace. We'd say slow and consistent, but he was just relaxed, calm. Even the run, we said he looked a little lumbersome, but he was consistent the whole way and looked smooth and just what, blasted the field, blessed the field with that with that event. 100 points for Bjorkman Gubins in his first career event win at the CrossFit Games, and he's standing by with Nikki Brazier. Bjorkman, you were not the first person in from that one-mile run, but you were the first person out the door and the first person to finish. How did you push? I knew it was definitely not about the first run, but uh, it's much more about last one and how you tackle the air squad and the push-ups. Now, it is hot down here. Did you practice in this type of... Well, like three weeks ago, we started out in Mallorca. Uh, then we came over to the U.S. and I've been here for like two weeks, so uh, I'm getting used to it. Well, congratulations. You definitely acclimated well for this event. Your first CrossFit Games win. Great job. Thank you so much. Jorgen Gubinson, emerging victorious in Murph. The men get through it. The women are up next. We'll be back at the Step Up Center for more from the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games.